And what's up everybody, welcome back to the channel, it is your boy Cheap Lutes, and I'm back with another market video, I know it's been a whole two days, right? So anyways, before we get started, please like, comment, and subscribe if you're new to the channel, that'd be pretty sweet. Um, we're gonna be talking about ways to make some MT, um, just some quick ways, nothing crazy. Um, so just a hypothesis, a little prediction for tomorrow, I believe that tomorrow we're going to get some sort of... Um, promo super pack well not a super pack but like a large promo pack would be a better way to explain that so if you know anything about 2k um, my team you know that every time something important is happening in the world in some way shape or form um, in relation to basketball or in relation to 2k they drop a large promo pack um, nba finals begin we got an nba final super pack um, every time a new season begins we get a season tip off super pack well, not a super pack. You know what I'm saying, large promo packs. Um, Halloween, we got possessed promos. So what does that mean? Well, with the release of the next gen consoles and that being that all of the badges and stuff are changed, so every card's kind of new, I think tomorrow that we will be getting another large promo pack. What that is, that's a good question. I'm not really sure what exactly that's gonna be or what cards are gonna be in it, but I can say that we'll probably get three or four really good rubies that are going for around a thousand MT because so many people are gonna be opening the packs. Um, we'll probably get a couple okay to decent sapphires um, that are more than usable for like 700, same with some very OP emeralds for like 700. And then we'll probably get some lower cost amethysts that are around 10, 10 or so K, like last time with Jimmy Butler and Donovan Mitchell. We'll get a couple diamonds that are going to be not terrible. We'll get one that's really cheap. One will be like 10 or 20K because so many people are going to open these packs and they'll probably be guaranteed. Um, and then we'll probably get like one diamond who's around 40 or 50K like Kawhi Leonard. And we'll get one cheap pink diamond that's under 100K and one really expensive OP pink diamond. So that's about what to expect. So the question is, how do you make MT? How, how do you make heads or tails of what's going to happen and get ready for it? So one thing um, I would recommend right off the bat is to do something with your badges. So if you're going to make the jump to next gen in the immediate future and you know that, um, I'm not sure how the badges transfer over because we've gotten so many new badges. Some badges are straight up removed and some have changed to like a different badge. Like for instance, Deadeye and Range Extender are different badges completely. And I believe there's a couple other ones. There's like one called Dag... I think it's like dagger pass or something something like in relation to like knives and passing i don't remember exactly what it's called i'm guessing that takes the uh case of like or it takes the place of like uh, needle threader but in all seriousness i wouldn't mess with uh any of your badges as of yet and the reason for that is just because i don't know how it's going to transfer so i don't want to tell you like oh yes sell all of your badges do this do that I'm not sure how it transfers over and until we get more information like next gen just came out so it hasn't really given us any information as to the transference of your badge cards and stuff like that so hold tight on the badges I wouldn't abandon ship on them just yet um, but it is important to note which badges are still in the game and which ones transfer over to a new badge like range extender turns into deep threes deep threes is more of an exciting name meaning that sorry for the loud noise i knocked over my vape by the way um meaning that it's probably going to be more expensive on next gen because there's going to be less of them so that means it's going to drive the price of range extender up in both auction houses um i mean we can take a look and see what it is i mean it is going for more it's going for about the same but it's going for about four or five k more because there's less of them so that's good um, that being said, like, you don't need five Lob City finishers. Like, all the badges, especially silver ones, are up. Not a bad idea to sell the Lob Cities for 5k. I would just go through and just look at some of the badges. Like, are you ever going to really put Putback Boss on a card? Probably not. It might not be a terrible idea to get a 1 or 2k for it while you can. Rim Protector is something I recommend keeping. I like that badge a lot. But, like, Chase Down Artist, 4k, it's not really worth keeping around. Um, Break Starter, like, you know, stuff like that. That's kind of my main point there. Um, clamps, from what I understand, is not as big of a deal in next gen as it is currently. That is something to keep in mind because I believe the value of clamps, as you can see, is already kind of coming down. Um, earlier in the year, even like a week or so ago, bronze clamps badges were going for around 15K and now you can pick them up for around 8K. 
it's just not that important of a badge in next gen and that's actually a really helpful thing for current gen because as more people go and they make the jump to next generation um it's going to cause some of these badges that are a little more important in current gen to fall in price a little bit which is which is good um especially for anyone like myself still playing current gen that's going to help quite a bit because this is still a very important badge for current gen gameplay um other than that let's move off of badges and we'll start talking about some cards to get rid of so any cards that came out after the tip off west you know season two and including those so tip off east and west season two dunkers international possessed team ups and loyalty you got about a week and a half before all of their value completely implodes um same with like the second half of idols like draws in russell um glenn rice any of those guys steve francis um the reason for that is because we are getting season ending super packs in about two weeks um what do you do about that it, it's tough to really say what you do because on one hand do you risk selling russell westbrook for 50k right now and then possibly seeing his price go up in a week and a half or do you want to abandon ship and sell for 50k now before his price goes down to 15 or 20 once the super packs are out that is what i actually recommend doing um when it comes to guys like russ or um who's another drazen uh who's the perfect example tony parker yeah tony parker's going for around what oops 63 50 yeah around 50k like if you really like tony parker um selling him for 50k right now and then picking him back up for 15 or 20 um around the super packs is probably the best possible idea for you um same with like ilgauskas peja it might be time to sell Amari Stoudemire for 100k, and let me explain why. That's a little insulting to Amari to sell him for basically less than some diamonds are going for, but hear me out. 2k is not dumb, okay? So they understand their own market, right? So if Amari Stoudemire is not going for much on the marketplace, and by proxy, Peja Stojakovic, and who's another pink diamond that's not going for anything? John Havlicek. Okay, so if those three guys are going for, you know, the lowest out of all the pink diamonds on the marketplace, which is about what's happening to them right now, when the super packs come out, those are going to be the easiest to draw pink diamonds. So if, if that makes sense. Um, 2K will increase the odds on those cards because they know they're not driving the MT market. So they're just going to destroy their market by putting them in as cheaper cards it's something they do pretty frequently um so i can predict that pretty much three at least three out of those four will be the easiest to draw pink diamonds and they'll flood the market with them causing their value to absolutely be destroyed um i don't think ray allen or tracy mcgrady are going to be easy to draw in those super packs whatsoever um, i think it's mainly going to be havelcheck peja and amari stoudemire are going to be the three that will be the easiest to draw and <clears throat> possibly like pete maravich yeah pete maravich is still pretty cheap too so i think him and worthy are going to be pretty easy to draw as well um making like tracy mcgrady ray allen and probably grant hill the hardest to get so it might not be a terrible idea to move off right now while you got the chance and get at least the most amount of capital that you can page stojakovic you should get rid of um at this stage i think it's probably just best to throw him up for 100 not for 100 buy it now, but just throw him for 100 and see what happens. If he doesn't sell, just put him up for 100k buy it now. Ilgauskas and Tony Parker, definitely best to get the 200 or 200, the 50k that you can get right this second. Havelcheck, his value will never be higher. We're, he's leaving packs and then immediately almost going into super packs, so he's going to be flooded. Getting 200k for him now is a great idea. Ray Allen and McGrady will probably hold at least some of their value, so it's not as absolutely desperate or like desperation time to sell them right now so you can kind of chill out on them um any of the amari it might not be a terrible idea to throw them up for 95k uh, maybe in a week i just think that once those super packs come out he's dropping to like 60 70k so if you really like the card you can make a 30k mt profit by just selling them now buy it now and then making a move from there kevin love and will chamberlain if you really like these cards which i know a lot of people do and i totally understand that might not be a terrible idea to uh, 
Cell at least will. Kevin Love is tough because I'd have to see if he gets any of the new badges. Like Sniper is a really important badge that uh, allows for basically easier stick aim shooting. So that's super important because it seems like aiming is the meta in 2K21 next gen, causing a lot of cards to inflate in value that you can get for a lot cheaper currently right now. Um, Kevin Love may be one of those guys. I'm not sure. Like I said, none of the databases are out with the new badges included, like not 2 kmtdb not 2 kdb not 2 kmt Central. None of them have the new 2K21 badges as of right now. So it's going to be hard to tell. I mean, one guy I can for sure say will go up in value and is already starting to because he does include some of those new badges is Buddy Heald. Buddy Heald was going for around 2 3K about a week ago. Now we're seeing him creep up to 7, 6, 7. Um, if you want to hold out for a few days, I could see Buddy Heald, especially with PlayStation just getting, you know, arriving to people today and people are starting to figure it out slowly. I think Buddy Heald rises to around 10K in the next few days. So if you want to hold out on him, good idea. Carl Anthony Towns may have some of those badges too. I'm not sure. Mike Dunleavy does. His price is already starting to rise a little bit. He has like deep threes and then he has like sniper and stuff. So James Harden has those badges as well. And those are going to be incredibly important as well. So it's just a matter of checking them out. Um, Brandon Roy, it's kind of tough. I don't know what he's up to. I would getting 97 K for him right now. He's actually going to be one of the rarer cards because he's not going to be in the super pack, so it might not be a terrible idea to hold out on him. If he does end up having some of those new badges, he's going to be really, really expensive, so you might be able to make a decent amount of MT there. Like I've said a bunch of times, it's already been confirmed that Dominique does have some of those, so his value has gone up. And Grant Hill, eh, it's tough. He can get uh, deep threes, though, so I know his value might go up a little bit. But yeah, as, as you can see, Dominique's going for about 200k right now. He's a huge beneficiary of these new badges. Manu's not really yet, but I, I still hold out faith that if you invest in Manu, he may come through in the clutch. Because here's why. Him and Dominique are not going to be in this super pack that's dropping in two weeks. Why? Because they released in Season 1. So, it's a facto. They're going to be two of the rarest idle lock-in cards towards the actual end of the life cycle when they actually lock in so those two are going to be the rarest 100 percent um so once that lock-in reward is announced and you know it's going to be good whatever it is it's going to be the first opal so people are going to go absolutely buck shit crazy for it they'll pay 150 to 200k for like a manu <laughs> at that stage you know just to get that opal because in their mind it's 200k for an opal does that make sense you just have to think about you have to think like a person who has four out of five lock-in cards and realizes they want that opal like under normal circumstances would it be justified to pay 200k for a manu ginobili no but when you think about oh i have to pay 200k for an opal oh that's worth it then they'll pay 200k for a manu does that make sense i have five of them i'm ready so either way, it has been your boy Cheap Ludes. I hope this helps in any way, shape, or form, but I think it will. Wouldn't abandon Tim Duncan as of yet. Um, I still think he's a really good card, and for all we know, he has some of those new badges, so kind of chill on him. John Stockton, I think his value is actually kind of on the rise, so that's a card I wouldn't be completely opposed to sell. Holy shit, this dude's got 44 gold badges on Stockton. <laughs> With Hall of Fame range, it's still not worth whatever you're paying for it, though, but that's that's pretty interesting. So, definitely keep on the lookout for cards like that. Like, uh, if you see one that has, like, 35 badges going for 95k, it's not a terrible idea to obviously scoop that up. It's kind of a new element to sniping this year. Um, just a heads up on current gen for any of my current gen heads watching this, like myself. Um... It is going to be a lot harder to snipe on current gen just because the refresh rate on next gen is a lot higher. So anyone with an Xbox Series S or X, um, they're going to be able to refresh snipes at a much higher rate than you are. Um, and that really does suck. So the idea is to try to get creative with your snipes at that point. So going to try to snipe Buddy Heels, for example, or sniping the Rubies, um, doing stuff that like the big snipers aren't going to go and try to do because everyone's going to try to snipe 500 MT pink diamonds, right? 
Um, but sniping a bunch of guys that you know for sure are going to raise in value um, during the coming weeks is going to be imperative. So, hey, if you see some buddy heels getting put up for like 2K MT, snatch them. You know, quick 4K MT. Um, it's going to be about small battles. Obviously, I'm not discouraging you from checking to get the big snipes, the big dogs, but I just want to give at least a little bit of heads up on that. So another guy that I did want to bring up just because it's somebody that I think a lot of people might overlook and it's somebody I have like a million of in my auctions. Um, Clay Thompson does have all of those badges that I talked about earlier, the really good ones that are in next gen. His price hasn't risen yet, but it's something to keep an eye on um, because I think now that PlayStation has, you know, dropped and everything like that, I think people are going to realize that Clay Thompson, the Ruby is a little more important that people have given him credit for. So I'm not saying he's going to raise from 1500 to 50k, but I'm saying he could raise from 1500 to 35, 4k. Um, it's entirely possible. So I mean, it's it's really something that we have to see. But either way, guys, thanks for watching the video. Please like, comment, subscribe if you're new. Check out the podcast. Will this ever end? If you want to help me out, donate to Patreon. Um, support the channel. Go check out patreon.com slash cheap ludes. I got exclusive content and stuff over there too that I will be dropping in the next week. Um, Twitch.tv slash cheap ludes if you want to watch me stream and uh, you know donate to the channel there. Give me some bits. Other than that, I'll be back with daily NBA 2K21 My Team content every day of the week. And uh, anyone who's watching this, I appreciate you literally so much. Especially all my people who show up in the comments all the time. There we go. Take it easy.